Man, you cannot talk about this movie without talking about the problems with time travel. <laughs> I think Doc Brown is like probably like one of my favorite um, old wise mentors of like mm -hmm. any like franchise. Like you know, he's like the Gandalf or the Dumbledore of this movie. But like, <laughs> right. he's so weird. <laughs> yeah, and just like so weird. like out of this freaking world and just out of touch. <laughs> like I I love Doc Brown. He's he's yeah. he's just so great. Um, <laughs> And I, You're I gonna mean, see maybe, some serious shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe it's a stretch to call him a mentor figure, but like, I really can't think of another like title for him, given like what he is to Marty. Like, Marty seems to like him for some reason. Like, I that is like a big flaw with this movie. I, I wish they'd get in. I wish they'd explore in this movie, right? Like, why? Why are they together? Like, why are they friends? Right. Right. And right. I mean, you, you can't even blame time travel because, and we'll get into this, but like. There is no loop going on, not really, right? Like time right. is the present is influenced by like the changes happening in the past, and the changes in the past haven't happened until like halfway through the movie. Mm -hmm. um, so like they were friends before that, so it's not like he remembered Marty from the fifties at least at first, right? Right. Um, so yeah, that that's that's always a little weird to me. Um, that you know this older dude is just hanging out with this teenager, like all right, all right, you guys be you. As long as it's civil, as long as it's fine, safe. Unless, of course, like because of that, you know, once you start the loop or once you travel back in time, then that resets how everything's kind of operate. So, unless, of course, there was some universal, you know, like feeling uh, or reasoning why they should be friends, mm -hmm. which had to do with the fact that they were, you know, Marty was eventually going to travel back in time. And That's an interesting idea. Um, the doc, right? Because yeah. in a way, they kind of give you the thought that it's possible because later in the film, when he accidentally, you know, when him and his mother kiss, she's like immediately like, well, something just didn't feel right about that at all. I feel like I'm making out with my brother or whatever. Right. Like, even, and then even like her mother says something similar, right? Like she says, yeah. look familiar. There's something familiar about right. you. So there's like, there's that whole inner working or inner feeling in your mm -hmm. you know mind and body connection about something not being quite right so maybe it's that like same a... concept works for the reason that marty mcfly and the doc are, are friends even though what like they shouldn't be because he's a teenager and he's like a crazy doctor who, that are you know super far apart in age but there's something there all right that all right here, here we go we're together. getting meta with this movie all right you ready so uh so in the in the computer programming of the universe, since as we know the universe is a hologram, there is a sub command for Marty and Doc Brown becoming friends, even though they haven't become friends yet. But it's a sub command, right, for a bootstrap paradox. Which boom, another computer programming reference, right? You boot the computer up. It doesn't make sense. How do you turn on a computer when the computer's off? How does how does a program in the computer? turn the computer on if the computer is off it doesn't make sense uh it's a bootstrap paradox and that's what this is <laughs> they were always friends even though they were never friends sub programming <laughs> I, mean, I like it i think it's i think it's <laughs> it's the best explanation i've ever it's, heard it's an explanation <laughs> <laughs> it makes Exa sense though exactly <laughs> it makes sense it makes sense and then and look and then you get in the whole conversation about Marty goes back in time to 1955, meets, you know, interacts with the, with his family when he shouldn't. And then has this whole, obviously goes through this whole ordeal of uh, trying to get him, his father and his mother together. But, and also in the meantime, he goes through, you know, he goes and meets the doc and, you know, the doc like doesn't believe him at first. And then obviously Marty tells him the story about how he hit his head or got the, you know, cut on his head and like, but now it's like, okay, now he's telling the doc what the doc is going to later invent 30 years earlier. So where does the, where does it start? Right? If he never went back, does the doc still invent time travel? So later? We, we, we know he so does. So this is, yeah. Well, so, we, so this we, is actually my point about it not being a loop though. Um, Cause like, it's not a true loop. It's not like um. It's not like a twelve monkeys loop or like right. a Harry Potter loop, right? Right. Um. There there is a loop that is created, but the story itself is is not right. Like the story was linear until 
the DeLorean gets introduced to the 50s, right? Um, like, we actually see, like, a loop being created in real time. Um, so, like, he he hit his head, and, like, it was always going to happen, right? Um, which is how we get to 1985 with the DeLorean. But when Marty, you know, messes up and ends up in the 50s uh, and gets Brown to believe him based on this knowledge that only Brown could have known, right? Um, it, it does create, like, a feedback loop in that moment. But I don't think that feedback loop existed until Marty uh, went back in time in the 50s. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't a loop until then. Yeah, but that's the problem, though, right? Like, when yes. you travel to yes, the it past... Is. <laughs> if, it you is travel, if you travel to the past... <laughs> It becomes your present, and then your future becomes your past. It's, uh, you know. Are you trying uh, to tell me that Back to the Future is a bunch of bullshit? Yes. <laughs> Most time travel is pretty flawed, right? Um, there's yeah. some that are less flawed. And I think we've covered a few on this podcast already. 12 Monkeys, not that bad. Uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, surprisingly good. Uh, about time, uh, problematic. But <laughs> this movie, yeah. wow. This movie's time travel mechanics don't make a lick of sense. <laughs> yeah, but to this movie's credit, the creativity on the machine to use for time travel oh, yes. is like awesome. Might be oh, the best. Yeah. Yeah. the best that we've reviewed so far like the actual mechanism in which you time right, travel right yeah but the science behind it not so much but the tool for time travel it, this has got i mean this is a it's a classic it's one of the best ever invented for, uh yeah um i mean yeah like like we were saying earlier like it's impossible to ever see a delorean or say the word delorean and not think of time travel right and right. it all goes to the line that Doc Brown has uh, when Marty says, you turned a DeLorean into a time machine. He's like, well, Marty, the way I see it, if you're going to make a time machine, you might as well do it with style. Uh, <laughs> and like, what other reason do you need? Like that? That's, that's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> it's so stupid and it's great. So good. Yeah. So good. <laughs> oh man. So um, this, this movie ahead. though, uh, I, I agree with you as far as like the tool goes, the tool actually does like, it's pretty simple and it makes sense. Yeah, certainly it's it's better than Twelve Monkeys, right? And I, you're yeah. right, mo most of the others um, that we've that we reviewed, it, it as far as like the procedure, it's very straightforward and it makes sense. Um, there. So before we get into the mechanic, just one one like practical thing that I think is so funny about the DeLorean time machine. So like unlike any other like stationary object, the DeLorean has to be moving. Specifically mm -hmm. at 88 miles per hour, which I presume is because it's two infinity signs sideways. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Damn, that's actually um, a good point. That might be the reason. I, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, but uh, so it has to always move, right? And like, what I find so like hilarious about that is that means wherever it is going, it will almost inevitably run into something and in this movie it almost always does it always <laughs> runs into something like a building uh yeah. trash cans like anything it's usually a building it's almost always a building <laughs> yeah luckily never people yeah uh <laughs> so ridiculous but Which, by the way this thing can take a beating like this thing is in multiple yeah. accidents and it looks yeah. fine yeah like the the most durable time travel machine as well it seems um, stylish and durable so like from the tool perspective right like invents the flux capacitor which is what you need to like time travel essentially right yeah like, yeah i, I guess like, you, i guess the, the flux is really truly the the time machine right it's really like the tool right and you but you need like nuclear electricity generation at least at the beginning, like at the earlier version of it, right? You need right. plutonium because it needs to be like powered by nuclear energy, essentially. Well, he said it wasn't being powered by it. He said it was being powered electrically. And like the plutonium was just giving it like, it was the thing, it was the element that had like enough of a spark, right? That would right. generate right. 1.2. Uh, 
By the way, they mispronounce gigawatts, and I think that's so funny. Um, they keep saying gigawatts throughout the whole movie. <laughs> it's it's gigawatts. Like it's supposed to be gigawatts, and I, I don't know if they just thought gigawatts sounded better, or if they legitimately didn't know. Um, it's kind of like the Star Wars thing of Parsec, and they're using it wrong in that movie too. Um, just hilarious. <laughs> gigawatts. It does sound cool. I I like the way it sounds. So gigawatts. Good. And then, and then the uh, the, look, the on the dashboard they've got the desti- what is it what is it? the de- destination your present and then where you currently are right is it those three yeah. yeah 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 or where you came from uh, yeah destination where you came from yeah where you came from and where you currently are and the present I think I have in the wrong yeah. order but yeah those are the three yeah uh, so good hmm. I don't, yeah anything else on the DeLorean I mean on the DeLorean specifically um. I guess only I, I don't understand um, the. I wish they explained why it gets covered in ice. Um, like, is it yeah, traveling in the point. vacuum of space or something? Like, it doesn't seem like it. Like, I wish he just explained real quick. Like, where where did the ice come from? Yeah, that's a good point. The yeah, because like it, the only way I can see that happening is like if it as it slips out of the current time, it slips into like. A, a temporary like dimension where there is literally an absence of heat. There's like, there's no heat at all. <laughs> it's just instant freeze. Yeah. Um, but yeah, based on what we know from Einstein and from um, Einstein being the dog, not the man. Um, <laughs> uh, just want to be clear based on what we know from Einstein and from uh, Marty, the trip is instantaneous. So like, I mean, for ice to develop, like that would, that's got to be an incredible amount of, like, cold that you're exposed to, right? So, like, what what is happening? Like, it feels like he's slipping into another dimension just really quick. But, like, right. how and why? You know? It was a weird choice, too. Like, I because they it, it did that specifically, right? And I don't know if it was just because, oh, that feels more science-y. Um, which, I, I mean, mission accomplished. It, it did. <laughs> um but yeah, they, they never really explain it, which you don't have to. I'm just I'm just curious from a nerd perspective, right? Let's just talk about the time travel mechanic. Like, okay. <sighs> you know, Nick. Um, so, <laughs> I I love this movie. I have no regrets about choosing this movie. But when we get to scoring, I am scared oh, yeah. because I am already yeah. behind uh, Nick in the time travel draft as far as scoring goes. And yeah, uh, for those who have been following this, who for those who haven't. Uh, we we judge this in three categories. Uh, we review the movie based on um, you know the movie itself, how good it was, uh, the time travel mechanic, which I'm not looking forward to, and then um, oh my god, what's what's the third category? Oh, how well this fit in the category it was drafted in, right? Yep. Uh, so two of those I feel pretty good about, but man, did I forget really how problematic the time travel is. Um, I will say that the the DeLorean being such a cool tool and being well, like they did explain the DeLorean very well. They did. And like how to time travel, that is going to give you a better score than Groundhog Day and already. But <laughs> the actual science part for time travel will hurt, but I think you'll get better scores than Groundhog Day. But All right, good. Um, I need them. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. So, so this movie... What's your, so, so this movie basically like is telling us um, it, it's relying on the grandfather paradox, right? Uh, which is um, if you if you go back in time and you <laughs> gross uh, if you you have sex with with your grandma, will you end up becoming your own grandfather and and continuing <laughs> the loop, right? Um, that's that's what this movie is like doing, right? As, essentially. Um, but in, in this case, it's if Marty removes his father, right, uh, from, from the equation, um, Marty will cease to exist in, in, in the future, right? But the problem with that in the grandfather paradox, um, oh wait, I messed up the grandfather paradox. I, I forgot. That's the plot of Futurama, not the grandfather paradox. <laughs> I messed up the grandfather paradox. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So that's the plot of the Futurama episode that messes with the grandfather paradox. It's a great episode. Sorry if I spoiled it for you. It's great. <laughs> but anyway, the grandfather we, paradox. 
Can you tell we watch too much time travel stuff? We can't keep anything straight. I love it. I love time travel so much. It's so stupid. Just um, talking about the future ROM episode for fuck's sake. So the grandfather paradox is actually Here we go. if you go back in time and you shoot your own grandfather. There we go. Then you would cease to exist. That's that's the grandfather paradox. Um not not the Futurama plot. Um anyway. So um, but the problem with that is if, if you shot your own grandfather, then you'd cease to exist, in which case you never would have traveled in time and you never would have shot your grandfather in the first place. So then you would exist, right? That doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So like, that's exactly what this movie is, is portraying. So the whole issue of Marty ceasing to exist, well, it would just put him right back where he always was because, you know, the, the time travel then never would have happened and he'd be right back. It, like, funny enough, like, if Marty does nothing after, like, he messes things up, like, things return back to normal, realistically, um, at least based on that principle. According to this movie, no, Marty just won't exist, and, like, the time travel will continue to exist for some reason, um, right. which doesn't really make any sense, nor does the, the time delay in which, like, his siblings are disappearing in the photo. I right. like the photo. It's cool. Um, it makes for a neat plot point and to check the progress, right? Um, yeah, it's a progress checker. I particularly <laughs> didn't like it. Like, I thought it was... It just, for one, it's more proof that their concept doesn't make sense. But they're showing us a fucking photo with, like, dis disintegrating, like, bodies, like, slowly. A like a loading there. bar, like, deloading, like, it's deloading health... It's like a health bar in a video game. Like, yes. oh, you're slowly losing health, and when it goes to zero, you no longer exist. Like, you're slowly this losing. This is sibling. stupid. Like, it makes no sense. Yeah, and you're slowly it goes losing down to zero. Sibling. You're an only so child. Stupid. So stupid. <laughs> Did not like that part of the film. Like, that was dumb. Definitely, it helps you realize how poor the actual time travel mechanic is it doesn't help you <laughs> like it's fun. It's a fun thing for the film. Right. And then at the very end when he's like starting to disintegrate on stage while playing guitar, I'm like, okay, this is, that's, that's a little much guys. Like, <laughs> right. Right. This, this movie loves to lay it on thick with the suspense. It's like, Oh no, yeah. what's going to happen. He's disappearing. Yeah. It's like, really uh. now, now, why wasn't he? Yeah. Why would? Why didn't it happen immediately after after he saved George? Right. Come on. Because then the so movie was, couldn't happen. The movie right, couldn't right. happen. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> so that was like a little fun, you know, a little funny. Like, didn't particularly love that, but, but yeah, this is. I don't even know where to start. Like, travels back in time, meets his whole family, which is like you know, breaking all the rules of time travel. You're not supposed to interact with anyone. Well, I guess he, that, you know, even though he wasn't born yet, you know, like whole thing, that whole thing, like mother falls in love with him. Weirdly, super awkward. And then he spends the whole movie trying to like get his father and his mother together. I still can't <laughs> believe I, I messed up. The grandfather paradigm. The grandfather the paradigm. Yeah, the future drama it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, at least you corrected it. Oh, yeah, at least I caught it. Yeah, that would have been terrible if you didn't catch that. That would have been hysterical. <laughs> oh, man. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, but like, I don't know. It's not that the time travel doesn't make sense. Like, he, you know, like he goes back in time, interacts with his family. Eventually, like, you know, it does make some sense that like his parents do have to get together, or he won't, he won't exist. It's not that he wanted he would disappear though, right? It's just that right. there would be a version of time that he's no longer in. But well, I don't that's, know. If... That, that's kind of my problem with this movie because like it's the the timeline is always the same. Right. And like, yeah. Um, I, I think, um, when I was reading up on this movie, like, uh, the writers, um, Robert Zemeck Zemeckis, there you go. Uh, and Bob Gale, um, they, they were saying that like, they wanted, because like, I guess like so many like time travel stories of that era or that had come before, 
time was like immutable and they wanted to create a story in which like hey like what if you could go back in time and like change things right um and then you know you could return and be the only one who has knowledge of the difference right but like it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense because like usually like the way that that works is like well like you've entered like a different timeline right um, right. But this is just one timeline all the way through, and it's just it's always changing, right? Mm -hmm. But like slowly, and <laughs> there's yeah, it's like and a he, delayed change. And he made such a big difference in his parents' lives by going back in time, by yeah. how they are now after he's gotten back, mm -hmm. to where like they obviously would remember him. And there was nothing in the movie at the end on like, oh yeah, we named you Marty after this guy that we met in high school, right? Like, which is super weird. That, that could have just been enough to be like, okay, like there's some acknowledgement that they remember this kid from way back when, you know? I mean, they, they do, they do sort of say it like toward the end, like the last interaction he has with Lorraine and George, uh, Lorraine's for some reason, like as they're saying goodbye, Lorraine goes, Marty's such a nice name. And like, <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, we get it. Well, yeah, right. But like, that that's that was still 1955. I'm talking about like there was nothing in like 1985 when he gets back that right. leads you to believe that they remember this whole thing happening. Like they didn't tell us the story about how they met again. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Right. Like the whole like the whole the whole time we're like oh the the way they met like my dad hit him with the car and then I met him and I fell in love with him like then and we kissed at the dance and blah 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 you would think that they would like tell the story again, just a little differently and include Marty maybe. And then it could have been a cool scene for Marty back in 1985, awkwardly being like, Oh yeah, I love that story or whatever. You know, like I was actually that, you know, that was me, but you don't remember cause it's been so long, but they don't do that, which I don't, I don't know. It felt like kind of a missed opportunity. 